Welcome to the Creative Plan Podcast Network. Join us as we share our favorite RPGs, one-shot games, tabletop games, reviews of items, and convention panels, and other exciting things that we run into from time to time. Sit back and enjoy the show. Hi, this is Kelly, a.k.a. Trixie from Ragnarok and Roll, a sign to Ragnarok story, and Tilda Wimblewick from D&D Journey of the 5th Edition. First off, I would just like to say thank you to everyone for listening to our varied adventures, as well as for rating us on iTunes and RPGpodcast.com. If you haven't rated us yet, we would greatly appreciate it if you could. And if you're looking for more ways to support our efforts, we are now on Patreon, a great site where you can help us continue making more podcasts, as well as some special surprises for our patrons. If you can, please look us up at www.patreon.com slash cppn. Every little bit helps. And again, thank you for listening. Welcome back to Creative Play and Podcast Network. Um, we are doing the RPG a day. My name is Kelly, and uh, with me is my darling husband, Jim. Say hello, Jim. Hello, Jim. <laughs> um, and today is August 22nd, um, and we are doing the word of the day is rare you know how you rarely listen to me <laughs> <laughs> or how you rarely get your steak medium well <laughs> no, oh god no medium rare <laughs> um yes definitely i mean preserve the flavor of the meat <laughs> <laughs> got more life in it <laughs> So, when you think of rare um, in RPG, what do you normally think of first? For me, normally when I think rare, I think like uh, my MMO RPG days, where I think the rare, the, the rare drops. You know, you have your rare spawns and your rare drops. So of course, oh yeah. So when you're gaming, you've got the ultra cool rare drops, which even like in the DMG, the, the Dungeon Master's Guide, it lists the here are the rare items that you're only going to see like one of these in a campaign. So you get that really cool one of a kind thing that actually defines your character because you've <laughs> got the Vopal Sword or <laughs> the Vorpal Sword. Yeah. Although I think it's funny that you say my MMORPG days sound like you rarely play. Yeah, right. You're like on it like at least every other day if not every day <laughs> i never play my world of warcraft characters. oh yeah no <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, uh, as i also think of the rare drops um uh and in uh paper gaming oh the pearl of power i'm a big fan of the pearl of power as a rare drop uh magic item uh gives you one extra spell slot a day Heck yeah, as I've been playing a lot more casters, you know, clerics and, uh, um, you know, Drew's bards, backup heels, as I like to call them. Mm -hmm. uh, having that extra spell slot is super beneficial. Wow. I also love bags of holding. <laughs> I mean, let's not forget that uh, your Pearl of Power is not technically that rare of an item. I think it's only, like, uncommon. Oh, well, then... Yeah, your, your Pearl of Power <laughs> is merely uncommon. So let me give you an example of some rare items. You have got the Arrow Catching Shield, the Bag of Beans, because everyone needs a Bag of Beans, the uh, Belt of Dwarven Kind, the Belt of Giant Strength, the Berserker Axe, the Boots of Levitation. My personal favorite, the Chime of Opening. What, oh. It's the Knock Spell in a, in a Chime. Which mm. makes it super smexy because then you just, uh, this hollow metal tube measures about a foot long and weighs a pound. You can strike it as an action, pointing at an option, op object within 120 feet that you can open, such as a door, lid, lock, and the chime issues a clear tone, and one lock or latch open opens unless the sound can't reach the object. Hey, how rare is that cloak that I got in my, uh, which one? Dagger's a Freeport game. Oh, the uh, Mount... Brimstone, or... Yeah, it's the... Allows me to teleport once a day, sort of. You know, that might be... 
It's the mantle of the Mount Bank. I, I yeah, forgot. that's it. But it makes that, you know, sulfur and brimstone smell when I do it because, you know, hey, it's a little infernal. <laughs> you know, it belonged to a cult of, of demon worshippers, so. Yeah, waste not, want not. <laughs> and, of course, on the rare list is the Venerable Sunblade for those who like to go to uh, Ravenloft. It's nice uh, to have. And the Sword of Life Stealing. Ew. As long as they're stealing somebody else's life. <laughs> <laughs> as well as the Ring of Feather Falling, which is ridiculously useful. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think our uh, Riono Otuk would have liked that in the Princes of the Apocalypse. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> it's pretty Although, mo- the very, very, very first character that I ever had who had died in a campaign, it was Ravenloft, and they fell from a great height. That would have been handy. That would have been very handy. It was uh, a dwarf that I had. Well, yeah. not to uh, rub it in on you guys, but uh, if you would have actually taken out that one night that you didn't catch, remember how he escaped you guys? Yeah. You would have gotten a ring of Featherfall. Oh, especially since, you know, Lil has a turret. That would have been nice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, well... It is what it is. I did get a t- cloak that allows me to to teleport like 500 feet. <laughs> Which, that's pretty good, too. <laughs> Bam. <laughs> Bam. Bam. So, pretty much, that's what rare means to me, is the, the idea of loot and the rare items that really make your character point out. Like, uh, if you look at everyone's classic drow, Drizzt, he has mm-hmm. that rare little panther wondrous item that he just talks and boom that's he's, true he's known because of the rare item he's wielding well not just that <laughs> true 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 so but uh if you're wielding a sun sword or a elven chain or a flame tongue weapon those those Frost are <laughs> those are all items that that will define your character because they're super unheard of by my, by most folks mm. True. So, uh, I, and of course, the the rare spawns is when you take a monster as a GM and you basically dress it up a little different, or mm-hmm. you make it at maximum hit points. Because remember, most players only fight things at their average hit points. Mm. You could totally make it a rare spawn like an MMOs do, and it's basically the maxed out version of itself. Yeah, I always go for the silver dragons. Mm-hmm. So that way, when you con it, you guys realize that this is the most majestic version of whatever creature you're slaying. Minute, you know, say you're going after a chimera or a wyvern, it's the most perfect specimen of its kind. <laughs> Boom! There's your excuse to max out, max out those stats and make it a rare spawn. Okay. Okay. Well, I think that wraps up rare. Um, uh, unless, uh, you have any final comments? Nope. Uh, I, I would like to do something we do rarely and that's agree with you <laughs> <laughs> and say, you're right, that that is a good place to hold on, hold on. What? Could you, could you repeat that last part? <laughs> that I rarely agree with you. No, no. The other part. I miss the other part. <laughs> you were <laughs> ready to wrap it up there. <laughs> Dag <Dang, nab> it. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone. All righty, guys. Have a good night. Thank you for listening to the Creative Play and Podcast Network. And feel free to enjoy our other shows, such as D&D Journey of the Fifth Edition and Scion Ragnarok and Roll, a Scion hero to Ragnarok story. Thank you for listening.